Good afternoon and welcome to our April 7, 2020 special meeting of the City Council. I have a few announcements and then we'll move on to our regular meeting. Today's meeting is being broadcast live on community television channel 25 and streaming on the city's website cityofsantacruz.com. All council members beside myself are participating in this meeting remotely. I want to thank the public for staying home to view today's city council meeting. Please note if you wish to comment on items one and or three, call into one of the following numbers. 1-669-900-9128. Dial in at 1-346-248-7799. one 1-312-626-6799. 6799 one 8656 or 1-253-215-8782. After you've dialed in, pl please enter the meeting ID number 379-565-623. Again, the meeting ID number is 379-565-623. 623, and when prompted for an ID, please press pound. When it is time for public comment, press star nine on your phone to raise your hand. When it is your time to speak, you will hear an announcement that you have been unmuted. The timer will then be set at two minutes. You may hang up once you've, once you've commented on your item of interest. If you wish to speak on another item, two things may occur. One, if the number of callers waiting exceeds capacity, you will be disconnected and you will need to call back closer when the item you wish to comment on will be heard. Or two, you will be placed back in the queue and should you press star nine to raise your hand when you wish to comment on a new item. You may also send an item to cityofclerk at cityofsantacruz.com. Your comment will then be shared with the council members as they are received and will be entered into the public record. I'd like to thank everyone for their patience as we had some technical, technical difficulties trying to get this meeting started. And with that, I would like to ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Mayor. Council Members Watkins? Here. Matthews? Here. Council Member Matthews? Oh, you're on mute, but. I am here. Thank you. Brown? Here. Uh, Councilmember Glover is absent. Uh, Councilmember Crone is absent. Vice Mayor Myers? I'm here. And Mayor Cummings? Here. Before we begin our um, first item of the evening, which is the certification of the March 3rd, 2020 presidential uh, primary election, I just wanted to. Um, make sure that the community was aware that we are making, constantly making changes during these difficult times as they relate to trying to um, protect our community from further spread of the COVID-19 virus. Many of the decisions that we have to make um, are not decisions that we um, like to make and are not decisions that we want to make, but the ultimate reason why we're making these decisions is to ultimately protect uh, the health and safety of our community. And so I just wanted to make sure that the residents of Santa Cruz were aware that um, about five or 10 minutes ago, a press release was uh, put out by the county um, health officer announcing that a new order uh, has been issued closing parks and beaches throughout Santa Cruz County beginning 11.59 p.m. on April 8th, 2020 through 11.59 p.m. on April 15th, 2020, a period of which includes Easter weekend and much of Passover. So that people are aware, um, this means that all beaches will be closed, all surfing will be uh, prohibited, that all state parks and city parks will also be closed during that time. Any violation of the order is a misdemeanor pub punishable by a citation or arrest with fines of $1,000 possible. Um, again, we do not take the, we, don't, we do not, um, want to impose these kinds of restrictions on people's ability to access open space. But given that we are approaching a holiday weekend and we're very much interested in trying to um, minimize and eliminate the transmission and spread of COVID-19 within our community, 
uh, it was in the best interest of the community to close the beaches at this time. If you'd like to find further information, you can visit the city's website and you can also visit the county's website for more information on the new order that's come forward, which has closed uh, the city and state beaches and parks um, from 11.59 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday evening, through 11.59 p.m. April 15th, 2020. And with that, um, we'll move forward with item number one, certification of the March 3rd, 2020 presidential primary election. And I'll t turn that over to our city clerk, Bonnie Bush. Uh, nothing much to say. Uh, we are just required to have you guys um, accept and approve the certification from the county of the results, which will then be turned over to the Secretary of State. Great. Are there any council members who have any questions at this point in time? If so, you can um, please raise your hand. Okay. Seeing none, I'll turn this over to members of the public. For those people who've called in, I'm going to unmute people as they're lined up within the queue. And uh, you'll have two minutes to speak to the council on this item. Uh, hello, uh, council members. My name is Elise Casby. I'm an activist and citizen of, in Santa Cruz. Um, I'm calling tonight. First, I want to ask, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Um, the reason I wanted to speak tonight is, first of all, I want to say I, I appreciate the uh, measures that the government is taking, both local and state and federal, to uh, make sure that we're healthy and protected from COVID-19. However, uh, can you still hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I am concerned about abuse of power during times of national emergency. We have seen where the abuses of power in the United States have become rather something of a sequence of events. I'm not going to go back into that. I think we all know and we can cite several instances just in the last, in, since the year 2000. What I'm really concerned with at this point are people who are laid off from their jobs, uh, workers who do not have enough savings to continue to pay rent. And so I'm talking about wage earners and workers who are, you know, basically living from paycheck to paycheck and also homeless people. Elise, Elise and I'm going to pause you. Ms. Casby, I'm going to pause you. The item on our okay. agenda is the certification of the presidential primary election. And so if you have something to say on that item, I would appreciate if you could speak to that item at this time and not I, I was actually trying to speak to public comment. Are we not having public comment? That isn't, no, we're right now, our special meeting is, our general business item is the certification of the presidential primary elections. This is a special meeting and so we don't have uh, public comment starting at 6 p.m. or oral communication. Oh, you don't, okay. I wanna also speak on item number one. Um, would I be able to please get back into the queue? You can just restart, we'll just restart your time and you can just have two minutes to speak to this item. Okay. Just tell me when. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Cummings. Okay, uh, to switch gears, my name is Elise Casby. I'm an activist speaking on item number one. Um, I think what, what, one of the things that we have to register as, as we review um, the results of the election is that this election was one of the most um, heavily funded uh, by special interests that we've ever seen in the city of Santa Cruz. Many of, much of the money came from out of state, uh, developers and realtors from out of state. And I'm just also wanting to register that I could cite so many abuses of uh, our public um, intellectual discourse, whether it was uh, headlines in the Sentinel that were 100% misleading, because Chris and Drew were never founded of any kind of legal misdeeds, and that needs to be repeated. Not the Rose Report, none of the um, investigations, and yet a slanderous, defamatory campaign that really needs to be looked at. 
um, closely. There were so many lies and abuses that were promoted. And one I just want to dwell on for a little bit is the utter and complete setup and misuse of the Commission on Prevention of Violence Against Women. That was entirely egregious. And it, it was egregious because it, it hits people right in a place where they are so vulnerable and need protection. And uh, that is uh, sexual assault and violent crimes against women. And for that commission to have been misused in the way it was really needs to be scrutinized. So what I am speaking toward today is that this is an illegitimate election and it might make, um, it might pass legal certification, but in every other way it is illegitimate and illicit. And um, anybody that was unseated um, during this election has to have been has to be seen as a victim of a certain kind of unethical activity. Thank you. Your time is up. And that's <laughs> okay. Next speaker. Uh, okay. So last Hi, four can you hear me? Four eight four four. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, on Easter Sunday, April 12th, Huff, Homeless United for Friendship and Freedom, will be leading an in-car protest to protest city council certification of elections instead of providing safe shelter in place for those outside. Um, I'm concerned with the viability of certifying election results in the midst of what authorities claim is the worst health crisis in generations. The city's decision to proceed with an election was ill-advised and undemocratic. It needed to be postponed for full and free participation. Why are we not addressing the primary, uh, primary priority, a special or emergency session to immediately house those outside in vacant hotel rooms to stop the spread of the virus while there is still time? Martine Burnell calls his calls to certify election results undertaken in the midst of a pandemic rings hollow. Elections across the country are facing challenge, though a partisan Republican-dominated Supreme Court is okaying this travesty. Instead of limiting this council, we need to a pro forma election results rubber stamping. We need an emergency resolution at this council to immediately house the hundreds outside in safe shelter-in-place facilities. They're likely getting sick right now in the crowded Veterans Hall, Laurel Street, and Armory Mass Shelter, which defies CDC guidelines. On Easter Sunday at noon, gather at the River Street parking garage number 10 at 24 River Street. Gather safely in your cars. For more updates, go to Santa Cruz Indy Media. Unless the city opens safe places, we must open them ourselves. Thank you. Okay, last four digits of zero nine zero six. Um, you're able to, you can go ahead and speak when ready. Is anybody there with the last four digits zero nine zero six? The last four digits of your phone number are 2267. You're on the line. Dustin. Uh, Mayor Cummings, that's me, Council Member Brown. Oh. I'm not in. Oh, that's right. Okay. Apologize. Next person is last four digits are 1999. Did you say one nine nine nine? Correct. Excellent. Um, I was trying to pay attention. I'll try to follow the rules, even though I might not. This is James Ewing Whitman. I'm curious about what we can actually question on, because when I first got on the line, there was some announcement that the beaches were going to be closed for a full week, starting fairly soon. May I comment on that now? No, this is just, that was just a public announcement. Right now, the item is general business, which is the certification of the March 3rd, 2020 okay. primary election. Thank you for that clarification. When could I comment on that? Uh, that's not an item on our agenda, but given the fact that um, we're, we have a lot of changing. Uh, 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 pardon me. Okay. So that was being done. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's not an item on the agenda. No, it was a public service announcement. 
Excellent. So we can't comment on it publicly? Not today, because it's not an item on our agenda. Okay. Justin, thank you for your time. I'll, I'll do so publicly. Thanks. Are you still wishing to comment on the item that's on our agenda? No, because what I want to comment on is very important. The other stuff is, I'm listening. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Well, it looks like those are all the members of the public who wanted to comment on that item. So I'm going to bring it back to um, the Council for Action and Deliberation. Uh, given that we are in this kind of circumstance where we're, um, we're all little panels, I was wondering if we could start by doing a roll call of council members who would like to comment, and then after comments, um, we can look for a motion to move the item. So I'm going to go down the... Um, I'm going to go down the list of council members to see if you have any comments on this item for the council members who are present. And I'd like to start with council member Watkins. Do you have anything that you would like to say on this item? No, I don't have any um, comments per se. I'm happy to move the item. I know it's really just um, what our responsibility as the governing body to official, um, kind of officially adopt this. So um, when the time comes, I'm happy to move, to move that the recommendation. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Matthews, do you have anything you'd like to say on this item? No, I have no comments. Okay. Councilmember Brown, is there anything you'd like to say on this item? Uh, nothing for me, thanks. Councilmember Myers, is there anything you'd like to say on this item? No, I don't have any comments. Thank you. Um, I just want to say a few things, just given the fact that this has been a very difficult um, election, and so um, I thought that I would say a few things regarding this. And I know that in recent years, uh, there's been a lot of growing tension in our community. And that, te that tension has led to bitter divisions, which ultimately have resulted in a recall elections, the results of which we're going to certify today. When we look back in history on this moment, we should not think about who were the winners and who were the losers in this situation, because ultimately, there were none because this should be remembered as a sad moment in our history, in the history of our community. When we look back, we should think about how we got to such a point where we stop listening to one another, stop trying to work through our differences, and stop trying to find compromise and move forward together. We are now living in a situation where everyone is losing. Banks, real estate, government, health providers, students, hotels, businesses, renters, union, Everyone in our community right now is losing because we're in a situation where we are all threatened by a virus that has the potential to wipe out a large portion of our population. Right now, there are no sides and there never should have been and there, I hope there never will be again. After certifying the election results and swearing in our new council members, my hope is that now <clears throat> our main focus is on eliminating the COVID-19 virus from our community and helping all members and all residents in our community now because our survival right now is our top priority. And <clears throat> with that, um, if there's a member of our city council who would like to make a motion on this item, um, I'd be happy to take that motion at this time. So council member Watkins. Sure, and, and thanks Justin, I think you're right. We do have to really come together and, and um, work together moving forward at this time. But with that, knowing that this is about us um, really recognizing our county clerk officially as certifying our election, I'll go ahead and move the recommendation as presented before us. I'll second that. So any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote and I'll, I'll pass it over to the clerk to take roll. Council members Watkins? Aye. Matthews? Aye. Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Myers? Aye. And Mayor Cummings? Aye. So that was a motion to approve the certification of the March 3rd, 2020 presidential primary election. Motion was made by council member Watkins, seconded by Mayor Cummings. Um, with uh, all eyes were council members Brown, Watkins, Matthews, um, Vice Mayor Myers, myself with council members Crone and Glover absent. And so that passes.
Next up on our agenda, item number two, um, is the installation and remarks by council members elect Catherine Byers and Renee Golder. And so um, I'd like to, I'm gonna unmute and invite to the meeting. Um, I'll start with Catherine Byers. Thank you, Justin. Uh, I don't think I'm on. So I think of that. There I am. There okay. All right. And so I'll turn it over to the clerk uh, for swearing in of council member Catherine Byers. Hi, Catherine. Go ahead and raise your right hand. Aye, Catherine Byers. Aye, Catherine Byers. Do you solemnly affirm? Do you solemnly affirm that I will support and defend? That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear. That I will bear. True faith and allegiance. True faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. For purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. And that I will. And that I will. Well and faithfully. Fulfill and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations, Catherine. Welcome. Um, now I'd like to provide you with an opportunity. If you had any remarks that you'd like to share with the public, um, now's an opportunity to do so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor Cummings. I do. It is an honor for me to be chosen again to serve on the city council. I thank everyone who participated in the recent primary election. I appreciate your confidence in me and I'm very happy to rejoin my colleagues in government. As a people, we face a wide range of difficult challenges, continually worsening climate conditions, the rapid worldwide spread of a new and deadly strain of coronavirus, disruption in the world economy and local economies everywhere. These global crises affect every one of us and will continue strongly impact the next few months and certainly even years. Both as a government and as a community, we will all have to make difficult choices. In a time of distancing, with, while most normal routines are fracturing, let's use the interval to reflect on the way we live, what we value and the ways in which we relate to one another. Let's meet our challenges so that we emerge one day as a healthier, better, and stronger society. Uh, finally, I'm hopeful that we in Santa Cruz, both as government and a community, can put rancor and partisanship aside and instead focus our attention and energy on curbing the spread of the Corona B-19, protecting the most vulnerable among us, and supporting and rejuvenating our local economy. Working together, let's make progress on all these fronts. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Byers. At this moment in time, I'd like to uh, invite Renee Golder to be sworn in by our city clerk. So I'm trying to. Trying to click on it. There she is. Muted. All right. Hi, Renee. Hi. Okay, go ahead and raise your right hand. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, state your name. Pardon? Uh, 
I, Renee Golder. I, Renee Golder. Do you solemnly affirm? Do solemnly affirm that I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear, and I will bear true faith and allegiance, true faith and allegiance, to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose, or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will. And that I will well and faithfully well and faithfully discharge the duties discharge the duties upon which i'm about to enter of, of which i'm about to enter congratulations right. that's it thank you congratulations renee um at this time i'd like to see if you had any comments or uh, remarks that you'd like to make to the general public I do. So everything about tonight is unprecedented and surreal. And it's with a great sense of gratitude and responsibility that I'm truly humbled to accept this position. I would not have this opportunity if it wasn't for the immense support of my family and friends and the entire community. I'd like to say, thank like several people um, who, who really went above and beyond to help me. Christina, I know we just met, but we're lifelong friends from now on. And Holly, you kept track of the hundreds of donations and made sure everything was legal. And everyone who I seek advice from, including David and Hillary, Lynn, Rochelle, Fred, Ryan, Chris, JM, Chrissy, Sophie, Karina, Deb, and Erica, Shannon, who was literally with me every step of the way, and everyone who endorsed and donated and put up a sign or said something nice about me, I'm truly honored. Thanks to my sister Lacey and her girls, Corinne and Maya, and the countless friends who walked door to door for me. I also want to thank Dawn and Tim and Catherine, who I consider friends, not opponents. I want to thank my mom and my mother-in-law that came out to make sure I was loved on election day. And finally, <laughs> to my, <laughs> my kids and Mike and, and uh, for, I'm doing this for them and I know it's hard, but it's a huge sacrifice for everyone. And tonight where I'm stuck home with my whole family, like by my side, I'm kind of awestruck by the state of the entire world. I didn't see this coming. However, I do see that crisis can bring out the best in people and I've already been seeing that. And as we navigate our way through and out of this quarantine, I hope that everyone will remember what's really important and focus on our core values. As a collective community and as individuals, now more than ever, we need teamwork and honest communication, out of the box thinking to see our city return to normal. We need to be prepared to make sacrifices and tough decisions. Please be kind and take care of yourself mentally and physically and be patient and understanding with others. Through collaboration and hard work, sorry, <laughs> I'm confident that we can bring our city back to normal, but it's going to be stronger and more and better than ever if everybody that's watching tonight can think, what can you do to help? And if we're all working together and on the same page. Thanks. Thank you very much, Renee, and welcome, Councilmember Golder. <laughs> all right, and with that, with our new council members, we will move on to our next item of general business. Uh, next item is number three, which is the resolution updating the city's bail schedule. If you're interested in commenting on this item and you've called in, please press star nine at when uh, public com it's the time for public comment to raise your hand. And when it is your time to speak, you will hear an announcement that you have been unmuted and the timer will be set to two minutes for public comment. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to our city attorney, Tony Condotti, to introduce item number three on our uh, general business. Yes, can you hear me all right? We can hear you. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Cummings, members of the City Council. Welcome to the new council members, Byers and Golder. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with both of you. Um, <clears throat> just to give you a little bit of background, uh, as, as you're aware, the City of Santa Cruz Municipal Code is a book of laws that the city has adopted over the years and amends periodically that establishes um, various laws and regulations for a lot of different aspects of life in the city of Santa Cruz. Regulations pertaining to land use decisions, zoning matters, uh, business operations, um, behaviors that are, uh, that, that are considered uh, potentially a threat to public health and safety. And those are all, um, and, and some are minor, such as having an open container or a dog off leash. Some are more serious. Um, the general mechanism for enforcement of the municipal code is uh, the criminal court system. And under our municipal code, violations of uh, provisions of the municipal code are generally classified as misdemeanors, except uh, where the code specifically calls the violation out as an infraction. Uh, an infraction is uh, uh, distinguishable from a misdemeanor in a couple of ways. First, uh, it does not carry with it the possibility of jail time uh, and a misdemeanor citation does have possibility of jail time. Second, a violation of an infraction can be uh, punishable by a fine of up to $500. Um, a misdemeanor citation is punishable by up to a fine of $1,000 or uh, up to uh, uh, six months or a year in the county jail. Um, tonight, you have before you the bail schedule, and bail schedule is really sort of a misnomer um, for those who are accustomed to this, the, the general term associated with bail in a criminal court system. Uh, it usually means the amount of money that you have to deposit with the court once a, a person is arrested in order to be released pending uh, a court appearance and pending the trial on a criminal citation. Um, uh, under a rule that was issued today by the Judicial Council, which is a statewide organization that promulgates the rules of court that are applicable in superior courts throughout California, the amount of bail that's in, uh, imposed for any misdemeanor, as well as minor level felony violations or, or felony arrests is zero. So that means anyone who's arrested for a misdemeanor during, the, uh, during this existing COVID-19 uh, crisis will not be booked into jail, will be released and issued a citation and their bail will be set at zero. The bail schedule, by contrast, is really just a list of fines that are imposed by the courts uh, or the that are imposed by the city. And the way the system works is that when a, a, a citation is sent to the court for processing, it goes through the court system. And when a person is found to have violated the code, then the court looks to the bail schedule, which is established by the city council, to determine how much of a fine should apply. And the bail schedule runs from uh, $10 for the, the most, uh, for, the, for the types of violations that the council has uh, considered the lowest priority to several hundred dollars for misdemeanor or high level infraction citations. Um, every, uh, a, uh, let me back up. Um, over the course of the year, the council will periodically adopt new ordinances that change the, the rules of the city. And when we do that, uh, usually on an annual basis, we'll amend the bail schedule to add those violations into it so that when uh, a citation is issued for different violations, um, the courts have a, a, a number, a, a fine amount with which to process that citation. And periodically we discover that there are sections of the code for which we have a violation, but we have not included a fine amount in the bail schedule. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen here. Hopefully this will work. So 
Um, wondering if you can see that. We can see yeah. So under chapter 220, uh, which is entitled Emergency Preparedness, um, the city manager is designated as the city's emergency services director and is authorized under um, the municipal code to make rules and uh, rules and regulations on matters reasonably related to the protection of life and property as affected by uh, an emergency. And as you recall, uh, in early March, the council did declare an emergency in connection with the COVID-19 um, crisis. Under section 220.110, anyone who willfully obstructs or hinders or delays a member of the emergency services organization or who violates rules or regulations promulgated by the emergency services director is uh, guilty of a misdemeanor. And so what we discovered recently, um, having not had to exercise this authority in several years is that we do not have a fine amount in the bail schedule for a misdemeanor violation of the emergency services director's orders. So that is what you have before you this evening. The recommended fine amount for a misdemeanor violation is $500. And then I have, um, I have another item that I would like to share with you. slightly revised version of the this is a slightly revised version of the resolution that's in your packet um, under a different provision of the municipal code when a, when a violation is defined as an as a misdemeanor the city attorney's office has the discretion to reduce the amount of the charge to a, an infraction and prosecute the case as an infraction as opposed to a misdemeanor and I should have mentioned that one of the difference between a misdemeanor and an infraction trial is that a misdemeanor uh, violation uh, is uh, can be tried by a jury as opposed to by a court trial, which is very expensive and uses a lot of court resources. And so on occasion, we get a misdemeanor citation and make a policy decision to reduce that uh, citation to an infraction. That's always done in consultation with the police department so that we're all on the same page with respect to the seriousness of an offense and how far we need to um, go to enforce it. So the recommendation for you tonight is to adopt the resolution amending the bail schedule to incorporate section 22110 um, as amended to allow to add uh, a truck, a fine for a violation of an infraction uh, violation of section 2.02110 at $250 as opposed to 500 for a misdemeanor. Happy to answer any questions or respond to any comments that the council has. Tony. At this time, uh, I'm just going to do a roll call of the council members to see if anyone has any questions for the city attorney. Um, so I'd, at this time, if all council members could unmute their mics. I'll start with council member Watkins. Do you have any questions for the city attorney? Uh, yeah, I, I have just one question. Tony, how is our policy um, in relationship to our neighboring jurisdictions? Is it about the same or what has the county or other cities uh, instituted in terms of, of something like this? In other cities, uh, uh, I'll just say that um, you know, given the seriousness of this crisis, the the recommended fine of $500 is on the high end for municipal code violations. And I think um, just given the, the seriousness of this matter and from the conversations that I've been having with other city attorneys, both here locally and throughout the state, um, they're all taking a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty hard approach to making sure that um, when we issue public safety orders that are intended to protect the public during this extraordinary crisis, um, that, that they have some teeth uh, if people don't follow them. Council Member Matthews, do you have any questions? No further questions. Council Member Brown? 
No. Council Member Meyer or Vice Mayor Myers, do you have any questions? I do not. Thank you. Council Member Golder, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Thank you. Council Member Byers, do you have any questions? No questions or comments. Thank you very much. Um, I will then turn it over to the public for public comment. Um, I will unmute your phone if you are in, in the queue, and you will have up to two minutes to speak on this item. And the first person is has the last four digits, 0906. You are unmuted and on the line. Zero nine zero six, are you on the line? Once, going twice. Uh, next caller is last four digits one nine nine nine, and on the line. We have two minutes to speak. Hello, good evening. Um, I have a comment on the swearing in and on what Tony expressed so, about um, the pause, different yeah. changes. I'm going to pause you. you. You can only speak to the item that's currently before us, which is the resolution updating the city's bail schedule. Um, we're not taking any comments. That's what I want to comment on. Okay. You mentioned the swearing in, and I was just wanting to make sure that it was clear that we are not speaking towards swearing, the swearing in that just happened and only to the city's bail schedule. Thank you very much for that clarification. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, the only comment I wanted to make is that the upholding the U.S. Constitution. I did hear what Tony said, and that was amazing. I took lots of notes. Um, I want to respect that as much as I can. I, I hope to see you, Tony, Mrs. James and Whitman, walking around the streets of Pacific sometime. So thank you very much for your time. I'm surprised more. Oh, my goodness. Am I unmuted? You're unmuted. Okay, I just want to say thank you. I'm going to go back to work. I got to get out of here pretty soon. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. The last speaker is last four digits 4871. Okay. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Mayor Cummings. Okay, um, yeah, before you uh, vote for um, this, uh, this bail schedule, I would really urge the council to consider um, the most vulnerable people who are outside right now. There are many homeless people who are some of the only people left outside in public places. And these people are most likely um, trying to survive in the parks. Um, I would think that the Martin versus Boise law that protects survival um, might have some um, influence in your decision making. But what I'm really just concerned with, just to get to the point here, is um, as soon as this law goes into effect tomorrow night at 11.59 or whatever it is, all kinds of people, and I have been out there meeting them when I can. I am keeping a safe dif distance of greater than six feet as much as possible, but I have also been uh, attempting to get food to people and keep them, um, you know, at least in survival, you know, getting enough food and water that they're surviving uh, through Food Not Bombs mostly. Um, and so what I'm just trying to get to is the fact that this is going to make people illegal um, in the parks. And also, um, a lot of these people, when I speak to them, are people who have had just the most unfortunate lives, just really, really difficult lives. Many are older, many are infirm, many are um, just do not have any place to go. And uh, some of these people are unable um, in some cases to even go to the shelters that are legally available. They just are not functional enough. So what I'm asking the city do is to set up an emergency place for people to be allowed to be, such as the Civic Center possibly or the Kaiser Stadium where the safe distancing can be enforced. Um, 
Uh, not not the fake triage type of thing that the city kind of uh, m mistakenly and somehow really erroneously was not able to really set up, but really truly provide provisions for homeless people so that they won't incur the fines. Sorry, I had to cut you off, but you were over your uh, two minutes time. All right, seeing there's no more um, members of the public who'd like to speak on this item, I'd like to bring it back, and again, I'll do another roll call to see if any um, council members had any further comments that they wanted to make, um, and then we'll, we'll proceed with action on this item. And so I'll go down the list, starting with Council Member Matthews. Did you have any further comments? No further comments. Council Member Brown? Um, yeah, I just would make one comment. I understand the need to um, move forward in this way, and so I'll support the, um, the proposal, but I, I do want to just say for the record that I feel like there is potential for this to have uh, negative impacts on our unhoused community members uh, disproportionately to the rest of the population, given the fact that we, uh, we are really struggling with how to address this and provide um, shelter, adequate shelter. Um, we don't have that currently. And um, so I just want to say that I hope that it, this is not um, used as a tool to um, make it more difficult for our unhoused community members to um, kind of survive during this very difficult time. Thank you. That's all. Thanks. Vice Mayor Myers. Muted, but I think you said you had no further comment. If that's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Council Member Golder. No questions or comments. Okay. And uh, Council Member Byers, do you have any further comments? I have a question for Tony. Um, would you pr um, give me this, this scenery, how it happened? Somebody is um, judged to have committed a misdemeanor. And they get right. a ticket? Yeah, if That's you would right. walk through that for me just a bit. Yeah, so just let me just clarify, because a couple of members of the public um, commented about the impact of this uh, action on homeless individuals, and I, and I understand the concerns about that very well. Um, first of all, uh, in addition to the city manager acting as emergency services director, the county health officer has issued uh, a number of uh, orders related to the COVID-19 vi uh, virus, uh, including the most recent shelter-in-place order and the, and the order that um, went into effect today. Um, violation of the county health officer's orders is a misdemeanor under California state law. And so, and the, and the chief of police and the police department is authorized to enforce that uh, state law against people who violate the county health officer's orders. Um, in connection with this emergency, um, the emergency services director has issued a handful of very discreet executive orders relating to the response to the, to the pandemic. Um, a violation of those orders under the municipal code will be, will be citable as a misdemeanor if someone is observed um, violating one of those orders, uh, for instance, relating to the recent um, uh, uh, food distribution, the, the order that is designed to ensure that people who provide food to the needy in our community do so in a manner that's safe and maintains social distancing and, and that sort of thing. Um, the, the, the strong practice has always been to issue a warning and only when people are observed, just fail to adhere to the warnings, are they issued a citation. When that happens, um, the citation is written, it's processed through the court system, and, it's, and it would be typically charged as a misdemeanor. Um, and, and so once a person receives a citation, then they're given a court date and they're required to go to the, to the court and they either enter a plea or if they, uh, if they contest the citation, the case can be set for a trial. Thank you. Yeah, I need to hear that. No further questions or... Thank you. Tony, I had a question. 
<clears throat> as it relates to um, some of the sentiments that were expressed around homelessness and kind of um, following up on the statement that you just made around the uh, health orders that have been coming forward. So um, when the shelter in place order first came out, one of the things that was mentioned was that um, that we should not be breaking up homeless encampments and homeless individuals should remain in those encampments uh, for safety reasons. Today, we just received the closure of the county beaks, beaches and parks, uh, which for example, there are, we, we are all aware of some of the um, encampments that are up in the Poganip area and in other open spaces throughout the county. And I'm just curious if someone is sheltering in place, like which of those would take precedent? So if there is an encampment in one of these areas that's considered closed, could someone actually be cited for staying in one of those areas? Um, or would the previous order of not disturbing those camps kind of take precedent? So I'm just kind of curious. Uh, unfortunately, I, I wish that chief of police were here to, to respond to that, but, but just in general, the, the main uh, impetus for the county health department's order is concern about people coming from out of town and and congregating in beaches and on West Cliff and uh, in, in our sort of tourist hotspots. Um, the order would be applicable technically to homeless encampments, but that really boils down to what is an enforcement priority and given the CDC's guidance on uh, on enforcement of homeless encampments during the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, it's really a matter of the discretion of the police department and the police department understands very well the potential negative uh, ramifications of, um, of breaking up an established encampment uh, during this sort of interim crisis period. So, so really I think it is directed not at uh, trying to clear the, the parks of homeless encampments, it's really more to keep the beaches and parks uh, safe and ensure that visitors are maintaining um, appropriate social distancing and, and safety protocols. Thank you. And the city, I'm gonna turn it over to the city manager for comments as well. Uh, yes, uh, actually the um, police chief, the parks director and I had a discussion about this earlier today. And uh, we all agreed that uh, we needed to follow the CDC guidelines uh, with respect to the unsheltered population and so that we would not be um, uh, citing individuals for you know, in encampments that are in, in parks for uh, for that reason. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, if there's no further questions, um, I'd like to ask if there's a member of the council who would like to make a motion on this item. I'll move the item. Okay. I'll second it. And for clarification, I'll move the uh, amended I'm clicking on raise hands. Oh, there. <laughs> it works. I'm, I'm willing to go ahead and do that. I think moving forward, we'll, we'll try that for making motions. So there was a motion made by Council Member Watkins, and I didn't clearly hear who seconded that motion. Seconded by Vice Mayor Myers. Council Member Matthews, did you have any further questions or follow up? No, I was prepared to make a motion because this is clearly motivated by a bad public health crisis and the absolute need to enforce those directives from the state and the county health officers that have to do the health of the population at large. Completely agree with that. Um, are there any further? Council Member Watkins. Um, thank you, Mayor. I just want to, for clarification, that I will move the recommendation as presented by our city attorney this evening, the amended version in amount. Um, and then also as a potential suggestion for law enforcement needing to issue these citations that they also um, share information about social distancing guidelines and so that those that aren't adhering to those guidelines are informed moving forward. Are there any further comments? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call to take the vote on this item. Pass over to the city clerk. Council members Watkins. Aye. Matthews. Aye. Brown. Aye, did I hear my name? Sorry. Got it, yep. Council member Brown, aye. Council member Golder. Aye. Byers. 
Aye. Vice Mayor Myers? Aye. And Mayor Cummings? Aye. That passes unanimously. And before we leave again tonight, I would like to just um, inform those members of the community who maybe weren't here at the beginning of the meeting that there was a, um, an order that was moved forward by our county health officer this afternoon and we received a press re release announcing that there will be a closure of all parks and beaches throughout Santa Cruz County beginning at 11.59 p.m. on April 8, 2020 through 11.59 p.m. on April 15, 2020 a period which includes Easter weekend and much of Passover. And just so everyone is aware, uh, this includes playgrounds, um, the beaches, surfing areas within the ocean, all of our state park open spaces, all of our city parks, West Cliff. Um, and if you'd like to um, learn more about what the areas that have been closed during this period of time, you can visit the city of Santa Cruz's website, also www.santacruzhealth.org slash coronavirus. You can call 211 or text COVID-19 to 211211. And you may also call the number 831-454-4242 between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. seven days a week if you have any further questions. And with that, I'll adjourn our city council meeting. Thank you all for joining us and have a good evening.